good sense and virtue enough to pursue the interests of his country. John Hart, former Second Continental Congress delegate, first speaker of the New Jersey State Legislature and Declaration of Independence signer. Guest essayist, James C. Klinger. John Hart of New Jersey was one of the lesser-known signers of the Declaration of Independence. He was also amongst the oldest, being one of seven signers who was 60 years of age or older. His life prior to his attendance at the Second Continental Congress was full of public service, primarily to his local community and the colony, and then the state of New Jersey. He died before the final battles of the Revolutionary War were fought and won. His exact date of birth is subject to some dispute. Most sources claim that he was born in 1713, but some have his birth listed as 1711 or even earlier. He grew up in Hopewell Township, New Jersey, and resided in that area virtually his entire life. His father was active in civic affairs, serving as a justice of the peace, assessor, and farmer. Hart had relatively little formal education, but was considered well-read, knowledgeable about the law, and possessed with business acumen. Like his father, John Hart was a farmer, raising cattle, sheep, hogs, and poultry. He also owned and operated grist mills, some of which were co-owned by his brother. At one time, Hart owned four slaves. Slavery had not yet been abolished in all of the northern colonies. New Jersey did not begin a gradual abolition of slavery until 1804. Under that law, children born to slaves after July 4, 1804, would gain their freedom after serving the master of their mother for 25 years for males and 21 years for females. Hart was a Presbyterian, but he donated land from the lower meadow in front of his home to a Baptist congregation in 1747. A Baptist meeting house was constructed there, and Baptists were enthusiastic in their support of Hart when he began his political career. Hart was elected to the Hunterdon County Board of Chosen Freeholders in 1750 and as Justice of the Peace in 1755. He served on the Colonial Assembly from 1761 to 1771 and was appointed to the Court of Common Pleas in 1768. He was selected for a committee to appoint delegates to the First Continental Congress. In 1775, he was elected to the New Jersey Committee of Correspondence and later served on the Committee of Safety. The committees of correspondence were designed to maintain communication among the colonies and to ops British customs, enforcement, and bans on paper money issued by the colonies. In 1776, Hart was elected to the New Jersey Provincial Congress, which was created to supersede the power of the royal governor. The Provincial Congress designated Hart to sign Bill of Credit notes issued by New Jersey. These notes were a form of paper money that would later be forbidden for state governments by Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution. The New Jersey delegates to the First Continental Congress had not supported independence for the American colonies, but on June 22, Hart, along with four other delegates from New Jersey, were elected to the Second Continental Congress. Hart arrived so late in the proceedings that he had little opportunity to participate in the deliberations over the Declaration, but he voted to approve the document on July 4th. Benjamin Rush, another signer of the Declaration, described Hart as a plain, honest, well-meaning Jersey farmer with but little education, but with good sense and virtue enough to pursue the interests of his country. On August 13th, Hart was elected to the State Assembly of New Jersey, and on August 29th, he was elected Speaker of the General Assembly. Hart presided over the Assembly briefly, but was called home to care for his sick wife. He returned to the Assembly on October 7th, but was called home once more. The Assembly adjourned on August 8th, the same day that his wife died, leaving behind her husband and 13 children, 
two of whom were still minors. In November, the British Army invaded New Jersey, and Hart was forced to hide out in some rock formations in the nearby Sourwood Mountains to escape British soldiers and Hessian mercenaries who damaged but did not destroy the farm. The British forces retreated after American victories at Trenton and Princeton, after which Hart returned to his home and then to the General Assembly. Hart was re-elected twice as Speaker of the Assembly. In June 1778, Hart invited George Washington to have his troops in camp at the Hart Farm. Washington accepted the invitation, and around 12,000 soldiers rested there before fighting and winning the Battle of Monmouth on June 26. A few months later, on May 11, 1779, Hart died painfully from kidney stones. Hart was in debt at the time of his death, and the war, currency of dubious value, and damage to his property forced his heirs to sell most of his assets. Hart had spent much of his life in some form of public service for which he was given little monetary compensation. He did not live to see final victory in the war for independence, but his role in the creation of the New Republic and the early government of the state of New Jersey should not be forgotten. James C. Klinger is a professor in the Department of Political Science and Sociology at Murray State University. He is the co-author of Institutional Constraint and Policy Choice, an exploration of local governance and co-editor of Kentucky Government, Politics, and Policy. Dr. Klinger is the chair of the Murray Calloway County Transit Authority Board, a past president of the Kentucky Political Science Association and a former firefighter for the Falmouth Volunteer Fire Department.